404 Team Rider and Salt Lake Team Rider, April Zilg here to do a board by board comparison of the 404 LTD and the 404 Jump. Everybody liked the Kuakea Designs Kihele versus Ayukai video so much that I thought I would do it again with my two favorite stand up paddle boards because a lot of people have questions. Which board should I use? Which board should I buy? Which board is best for specific conditions? I know we all want that magic one board quiver, but inevitably there is going to be a board that is better in a certain condition uh, than others at times. I mean, that's just physics. So let's go from the nose to the tail of each of these boards and discuss what makes them different and what kind of conditions that those attributes of the boards would benefit you in. They are both 14 foot long boards, so we don't need the measuring device for that. We know they're the same length. My jump is 22 inches wide. My LTD is 23. They do come in different widths for those of you looking for a more stable or faster platform. The volume of the jump is nearly 20 liters more than the LTD. This one comes in at about 263.3 and is 10 and a half inches tall. The LTD volumes in, it's not a weigh in, what is volumes in? Displaces in at 243.3 liters and is only eight inches tall. So let's look at the noses of these boards. And the nose of this dog, oh God, the nose of that dog just got me in the nose. Excuse me, excuse me, thank you. We have nice piercing bows on both the jump and the LTD. But of course you're gonna notice, if you come over from the side here, you're gonna notice the rocker on the LTD versus the jump. You're also gonna notice how this one is flat and this one has like a really pronounced heel. It's about six and a half inches. Ooh, about eight and a half inches. So we've got about two inches more height on that jump. When I would paddle in very choppy or challenging conditions, if it's in the ocean and you wanna get in and out through the surf, I'm gonna take the board with more rocker, hands down, not even a question. If I want to charge up wind, I am gonna take the jump. If for some reason there was a lot of quartering or crosswind, that might lean my decision over back to the LTD because it's not as tall and you're not getting as much of that wind push. But at the same time, the snows being more engaged in the water might prevent some yaw of your craft. So it is, it's a hard call. Upwind paddling, choppy conditions paddling, flat water paddling. I'm gonna default to the jump, surf zone paddling, downwind paddling, like light downwind. Um, Danny likes the jump. I'm gonna go with the LTD. The jump is 10.5 inches tall <laughs> at its tallest, which is gonna be up here. So that 10 and a half inches. Max is out in front of the standing area, so all your volume most of your volume of this board is in front of the standing area. Whereas the LTD, it's still the bulk of the volume. It's more evenly distributed throughout the entire board. Both boards, you'll notice a nice ridge along the, like a standing ridge. What that does is makes the board more rigid versus like a flat one, uh, like a flat board. It would, has a tendency to kind of flop if you've ever been on a board and you bounce and it kind of like undulates, that's not a good thing. We wanna avoid undulating stand-up paddle boards if we want to go fast because any energy that we're losing into the flex of the board, that's energy that we're not translating into forward momentum. A little bit of flex here and there isn't a bad thing, especially like if you drop something on the board or uh, you know, you're in a, a wave. Certain surfboards, you want them to flex and pop on the face of the wave. Race boards, not so much. These are, this is an excellent design. I love it. Now, you'll notice the standing area for each board is a little different. They are both a dugout style stand up paddleboard. So they have these 
big rails like that go up, prevent water from splashing in. If I'm gonna do a surf zone race or anything of that nature, I'm, I definitely wanna go with this LTD because these are just a little bit more forgiving on the old rib cage. This, however, back to this like crazy choppy, windy, like grinding it up upwind or, you know, getting hit in a flat water race with a myriad of conditions. I love the height of the, the sides on this board. My feet are so dry in the jump. It's got four scuppers that drain very quickly, but I don't think I've ever needed them. Both of the boards being dug out, back to that rigidity argument that I was talking about earlier, we want boards that are very rigid, and both of these are more rigid because of that dugout standing area. If this were to be completely flat in the standing area, it would have a tendency to flex, but the dugout provides more structure that prevents flex, and that's, that's such a huge component, especially in the standing area where we're standing and we might create some, some bounce or some undulation ourselves. Handles, adjustable, four scuppers in each, what, like the creature comforts, all the things that are listed on the website already that you're not really watching this video for. They both have a built-in, an FCS, Thin key mount, but it works for your GoPro, it works for your speed coach or whatever device you want. Got the uh, the vent plugs so that if you leave it out in the sun, don't do that. If you leave it out in the sun, it gets a little too hot. It's not gonna, I mean, if you leave it out long enough, anything will delaminate, but hopefully it, it is definitely gonna bubble and off gas here. A nice new upgrade on the jump because it was built for flat water racing conditions. I believe Danny installed a leash plug right here in the standing area so his leash didn't have to go all the way to the back. Another thing I really like about the jump is the scupper covers on the exterior. The old LTD did not have kind of like these backfill covers or the scupper covers. And you could argue that maybe that was causing some turbulence and slowing you down in a purely flat water race. These aren't the reason you're gonna lose a race. Not saying they're the most efficient thing in the planet, but they're certainly not the reason you're not gonna win. So they're not a big deal, don't worry about them. But I do like the covers. I, if for no other reason, they just, they look fast. They look scary, they look cool. Say you're going back for a buoy turn on either the LTD or the jump. On the jump, because it is a, it's not as recessed, and again, like I said before, the volume is more distributed from the nose to the tail of the entire board. It ramps up oh so gently to its maximum height, and it's just a nice, gradual, linear step up that you don't even notice when you go back for that buoy turn. Really easy to sink this tail, not a whole lot of volume. I like it, it surfs really well. However, in the jump, if you are not used to uh, an aggressive ramp up for the tail, this one's gonna take a little bit of getting used to and that's fine. It took me a hot minute to get used to it, but now I absolutely love it. Remember how I mentioned my feet are bone dry in here earlier? No water is getting in here, like you're, you're in, you're safe. From the second scuppers back, it's a very aggressive ramp and then it flattens out hard. Once you're back here, the standing area, there's so much volume and the rails are so square that it is insanely stable to stand on. You get back there, it's like a whole nother board back here. It's like, there's a board up there in front of where you're standing, and then there's another board back here. The buoy turns are so stable and so secure and so fast. And that's not to say that they're not awesome and stable and secure and fast on the LTD, but they, they are different. I, I actually do prefer buoy turning on the jump now. So this is like three, like three and a half-ish inches. And this is four, four and a half. There's an extra inch back here in the tail of the LTD. Surfing, I wanna surf this board if it's a surf zone race. I love the control, I need. I love that volume. I love that nice gradual area for, for footwork, you know. Definite go-to board for very short sprints and surf zone races. So let's look at the tail shape. Very, very similar, 404 didn't, Aside from this one being a little thicker and having a little bit more roundness, they're both pretty square. So if you look down at them um, straight down, 
They are both square. There's more tail rocker in the jump. When there's more overall rocker in the LTD. And now this is very stable. Nice square, nice hard edge, and these nice two points. So if they were to pull this in anymore, then I feel like the boards would be a little too unstable because anytime you bring this square, so this square came to a point, that point is now a point around which the board would pivot and roll potentially a little too much. Now those boards that have really, really, really wide square tails, it can create a little bit of drag, a little bit of friction and slow you down. There's some fancy things that some boards do underneath the square tail to make it like a pin tail and a square tail at the same time, but that is neither here nor there and is a topic for another day. Deck pad, standard on both, they're actually identical. Let's flip these guys over because that's where this gets really exciting. Oh, they're upside down, yay. All right, now let's take a closer look at the nose on the jump to my left. LTD to my right, you can really, really see that pronounced heel versus the LTD, it's almost perfectly flat. Now the jump continues that pronounced keel until right in front of the standing area, it flattens out. LTD flat the whole way. Let's look at the rails real quick before I get ahead of myself. Traditionally, now this is a generalization. There's times when this statement is not true. Round rails are fast and square rails are slow. In general, square rails are incredibly stable and round rails are incredibly unstable. The best stand-up paddle boards on the market in my 10 years of paddling have been boards that combine a round rail and a square rail throughout the profile. And my favorite to date are boards that have a nice round rail in the front of the board, in front of the standing area, you know, it's encountering the water where speed really does matter. And then that nice square rail in the back where when I go back for a buoy turn and I need that added stability, it's there. So that's my personal preference. Doesn't mean that it has to be anybody else's, but what I love, both of these boards have very round rails up front. The jump, it's round on the side, but man, yeah, it's just, it's. It's shaped kind of canoe-like, don't you think? This is round on the sides, but it flattens out. So instead of carrying that roundness all the way, it's just lopped off. When you're paddling, at first, this would create less drag in the water than this more wetted surface area. But this is kind of on top of the water. You get to this flat area. Now, this is going from round and it's getting harder as we move back. This is staying pretty consistent. The rail profile isn't hardening up as fast as the jump. Other super exciting part that everyone is, just keeps looking at is the, the bottom shape on this jump. So after we have that really engaged keel, that kind of long canoe shaped nose, we have that flat area, which is helps with stability, but what you're getting is kind of like this water. I'm gonna butcher the explanation of this because I, I was one that used to think just more wetted surface was always a bad thing, that it would, more wetted surface meant more friction, which meant a slower craft. And with the jump, that is not the case because of the concave in the middle and the way that the water comes off of this round area here, it comes up and it almost facilitates lift as it, it heaves up under the board. So as the water comes off the nose, the water that's under the board follows the contour, hits this little flat area and whoop, whoop, it's like a magic carpet of awesomeness. Let's look at the standing area. So this double, so that, like it's almost like two holes. Um, but this concave area right where you're standing on the jump, it's so stable right through here. And it is eight inches tall in the standing area. And that is the 22 inches wide. So wetted surface would be 22 inches wide. It's obviously it tapers in just a little. It's about like five feet in, it gets uh, to its widest point 
and it maintains that for probably like three or four feet. The LTD, again, flat, 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 flat all the way through. Incredibly stable board. Um, flat, slick, fast. I like it. Um, 23 inches when you get to the standing area. It gets wide quicker. Similar, similar profile thus far. So it's 23 in the standing area and six inches tall. In my time trials so far, if it is a sprint, like off the line, the LTD is definitely faster. So it's flat underneath. And if you have the power to do like a maximum speed, like we did in the APP fast track, this board is going to hit a higher top end speed. So in my time trials, anything under 200 meters, this board is regularly faster. The jump, however, in those shorter, shorter distances with maximum power, not hitting the same top speed, but once you get into any time trials that are 400 meters, 800 meters, 1600 meters being a mile, this board is consistently faster for less effort in the flat water. I do feel like this board accelerates more quickly, but this one has the capability of hitting a higher top end speed, which makes it feel more stable in the face of a wave too. So this one, because it doesn't hit a higher top end speed when you're paddling it with your own power in the flats, it can feel a little unwieldy in the surf zone. It's not a surfboard feel, whereas the LTD definitely has more of a traditional surfboard feel. Speaking of surfing, let's look at these fins. So as you come to the back of the jump, the, the concave becomes less and less pronounced. It's still a gentle concave where the fin is, but then it flattens down and there's actually, it reverses and does a little convex right there at the end. The LTD goes into a slight concave at the tail. So there's just a little bit of a concave, a little bit of a dip there. The fin on the LTD, you can put it up as far as 10 inches from the tail. I usually put mine in at around eight. The furthest forward that you can put the fin into the LTD is at about 22 inches. So that's where the, the front of this one is. You've got anywhere from one foot to 22 inches, one foot, 10 inches. However, in the jump, my goodness, great googly moogly. Look at that. It's from 19 to 29 inches. So it's in there at around the two foot mark. That's not even, the other one's like over here somewhere. What does that mean? Why does that matter? For me, I like buoy turning this board better and it might have to do with the fact that I don't have to get my foot as far back. Your most efficient buoy turns happen when your back foot is placed over your fin. So I have to get back further on the LTD to have a successful buoy turn. However, in the surf zone, I want my fin further back because I want to have more control over my board when I'm stepping way, way back on the tail, especially for those big, steep, giant waves that you have to run all the way back to the back. I don't wanna lose control. I don't want my fin to be in front of where I'm standing if I'm in a situation like that. Also, tracking. The jump was built to be a flat water machine, super fast in the flats, and having the fin further up is going to help the board track straighter, and it's gonna yaw just a little bit less. I'm sure that its position with relation to the concave means something too, but uh, that's beyond my physics degree capabilities. That would be somebody who finished their physics degree. How wide is the standing area of each? 19 inches inside the cockpit of the jump. 19 inches inside the cockpit of the LTD. The jump is narrower, but has the same standing width in the cockpit. How high endy. <laughs> Much. <laughs>